What's up everybody, we're back for another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, where I show you how to save money, make more money and better yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms and most importantly, build wealth. This video is all about the money advice I would give my younger self. So at the time of this recording, I'm 26 years old. I'm going to be 27 this year, getting awfully close to 30. So I figure if I could go back a decade and give my younger self some really good, solid personal finance advice, this would be it. Now, I'm just going to warn you real quick. You're going to feel like I'm talking directly to you. Like it's going to feel like I'm speaking to your soul, especially if you're a younger person. But that's the goal of this video. And this is what I wish I would have known back then. If you want more in-depth financial tips that are more premium, go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon. Link is down below. Patreon is officially live today. So we're not going to waste any time. We're going to get straight into this. My first piece of advice is this. You got to spend money sometimes, man. And I know that sounds obvious to you, but no, really. I mean, really think about this. This whole channel is about improving your personal finances, saving more money, making more money, right? And a lot of the advice I give is around keeping more money, right? And so back when I started getting my first jobs and I started making money, I was heavily focused on keeping pretty much all of it. And this followed me from when I was a teenager all the way up until I got my own place by myself. And I just got to the point where I was almost scared of spending money. I feel like, oh, no, I can't spend money. Uh-uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, I was tiptoeing around the idea of spending money, even though I was making pretty good money. I was so stuck on saving and penny pension and doing the bare minimum. But I didn't realize I got to spend some money sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You need a vacuum cleaner. You got carpet in your house, you got carpet in your apartment. You know what I'm saying? You need a vacuum cleaner. You don't ever want to have company over and they're stepping around Dorito cracks and Cheerios and Fruit Loops. You know what I'm saying? Popcorn. Especially if they're walking around without shoes on. You don't you don't need that in your life. I'm telling you right now. That's that's how people start talking about you now. And if you think I'm playing, I'm not. Like I've been over people's houses. I know you have too. You know, pieces of sock all over the carpet, you know, crumbs and chips and all this other stuff need a vacuum cleaner. And the reason I say that is because when you're younger, a vacuum cleaner feels like it costs a lot, but it's a good investment because you need to keep your place clean. You need something to shampoo your carpet with too. Sometimes you need to get the deep clean in there. A vacuum cleaner ain't just gonna cut it, it's just gonna get what's on the surface. Sometimes you need to get something that deep cleans within the carpet and then you vacuum over that. If you got hardwood floors with the laminate, you need to get yourself a Swiffer duster. You need to get yourself a broom, a dustpan. These are the basic things, but some of these things on this list are going to seem more pricey than others. You can't be walking around in your own place and you're having trouble because your foot done got stuck to some syrup that you dropped the other day when you were making pancakes. You got bacon bits that fell off the counter the other day. You got eggshells from last month still sitting right there. Sweep it up and then get the Swiffer duster out. Get that solution all over the floor and just scrub it down. Make it shiny. I can't have you going out like that. I can't have you having company over and they're over here about to slip and slide in the kitchen. If you got a car, you got to keep it clean. You got to wash it, detail it. These are a lot of the things that I felt were too pricey for me at the time. And I didn't even explore the idea of finding an affordable way to do this. I just said, nope, can't do it, won't do it. And this was even when I had a good amount of money in my bank account. I was prioritizing saving, investing, and all this other stuff but I could have spent $50 and got a very good car wash. You can spend 70 bucks, get yourself a good vacuum cleaner. I was trying to justify my bad decisions by saying, well, I, I'm, I'm saving money. How you saving money, but your house stink? These are just funny little examples, but they're legit. Like these are mistakes that I did make. I absolutely refused to spend money on those things at first for like the first couple of years of my adult life. I'm just saying, and it showed. Now, all those might not apply to you, but there's also stuff like pots, pans, things of that nature, right? Things that can be costly, like a whole set can cost you quite a bit of money, like upwards of 100 bucks, especially if you want something nice. But it's a good investment because they're going to last you a while. You got to spend money sometimes. You got to. Here's another piece of advice I would give to my younger self that I wish I would have known back then. Automate everything. And I want you to think about this in three different ways. So we'll start with the present. Most of us already automate our bills, but some of us don't. And when I first started out, I didn't have all my bills automated. Like, I can't tell you how many times I actually forgot to pay some of my bills. I forgot to pay my utility bill before. It was only for like a day, but I still forgot, you know what I mean? I forgot to pay my rent before. That's a lot of fun. And all I'm saying is, it's going to make your life 
1,000 times easier if you just automate the bills that you already know you're going to pay anyways. Just automate them. It takes like two seconds to do, and then your life's going to be easier. Your bank account just goes boom, 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 boom. It does the moving for you. Most of y'all are already doing that, so that's good. But let's take it to step to the next level, right? We're going to start talking about the future. And when I talk about the future, I'm mainly talking about savings. Because when you save, the purpose for saving is for the future. When you pay for your rent, when you pay for your utilities, when you pay for your phone bill, you're basically paying for the current time right here, right now. But when you start saving your money, you're saving for the future. Whether it's you want to buy something in the future, whether you want to have, you know what I'm saying, an emergency fund in the future, a cushion, a savings account, whatever the case is, you're saving for the future. You need to automate that. So many people come to my channel to learn how to save money, and I say it over and over and over again. I'm going to keep saying it until everyone starts doing it. Automate your savings account. That is the only way to make sure you're doing it consistently without fail. Automate it. So I'll give you an example real quick. Right now, I have my savings automated in two different ways. Every time I get paid, I have a certain amount of money that I have automatically go straight from my checking account to my savings account. And then from my savings account, once it hits a certain number, I have a certain amount going all the way to a different online savings account so I don't have to worry about touching it. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to have a distinction between my savings account within my bank account and my online savings account, which would hold my emergency fund. Plus, it gives me the out of sight, out of mind factor. So it's kind of like a set and forget it thing where you don't look at it every day. So you don't realize how much money is accumulating in there. So you'll be a lot less tempted to spend it. Even though I act like I was too scared to put money into a vacuum cleaner or a Swiffer duster or something that would actually keep my place a lot cleaner, I, I would buy some Jordans. Let me see something I like in the store. I'm going to get it. You know what I'm saying? So having that protects you from frivolous spending. So if you have any issue saving money, just automate it. Figure out a number that you can afford to save every single month and just do it. Automate it. I don't care if it's $50. Automate it. And then once you do that, you're going to start realizing, man, I can actually save more than this. Let me let me go ahead and check real quick. I can put another 20 in there every month. So then you increase it incrementally until you, until you just keep going. You're unstoppable. Next thing you know, you got $1,500 in your savings account. Then that turns to $3,000. And then you just keep going. That's what you want to do. And if you don't know how to do it, I promise you, your bank account has a way to transfer your money automatically. Every single one does. You know why? Because it's 2022 and technology is advanced. Now we're going to talk about the past. And when I speak on the past, I'm purely talking about debt. Think student loans, think credit cards, uh, even car notes. These are all purchases you've made in the past that now you're paying off. Automate it. Most people already automate their car notes, but there's not nearly as many people who have automated their student loan debt or their credit card debt. And I can definitely 100% tell you that I was one of those people. So remember all those bills I was telling you earlier that I forgot sometimes? I've forgotten to pay my credit card bill before, more than once. And I've been a couple of days late on my student loans before. So the moral of the story is you gotta pay the stuff off anyway. So go ahead and set that automation. And what this is actually gonna do is since it's automated, it's going to take the money from you at a certain date, whatever date you assign to it. And so what that'll do is that'll give you a big picture view of how much money you actually have every month to spend freely or just how much money you'll have left over. So you'll be less likely to just spend mindlessly if you're actually automating these things. So it's going to make your life easier in that way. It's going to increase your net worth. It's going to help you get out of debt. And it's going to help you save more money. It's a win, win, win. Past, present, future. Here's the third piece of advice I really, really, really want to bring home. And this is something I think any young person in the world should hear because this is extremely valuable. The single most profitable skill that I have gotten in the past decade has 100% been emotional intelligence. This is something that will pay you dividends for the rest of your life. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you need this to have consistent income for your whole life. Emotional intelligence in a nutshell is your ability to understand yourself and other people. And if you can do those two things, you will be able to run the world. I'm telling you right now, you will be unstoppable. So I'm going to chill with the boring terms real quick and I'm going to just tell you a quick story. Do you know how many people I've seen lose their jobs because they had a lack of emotional intelligence? Because they done gotten in an argument with somebody, they cussed their boss out, they ended up getting into a fist fight at work that yours truly had to break up. Just saying. You know how many people I've seen get sent home for 30 days without pay because they wanted to act crazy at work? 
Think of all the businesses that get torn apart because the relationships within the business are not there. Matter of fact, if you're watching this right now and you have a job, I guarantee you've seen somebody do somebody else dirty at work and because of it, it ruined everything. I know you've seen something underhanded done at work before. I know you've seen some animosity at work before. I know you've seen people walk out and quit because they were too impatient and things didn't improve at the rate they thought they should, so they just left. They just up and left with no other options. And if you haven't seen that, I promise you, at some point in your lifetime, you will. All because they lack emotional intelligence. Now, it's not something that you're going to learn overnight. There are books I can recommend. As a matter of fact, I made videos about this. When I first created this channel, I made videos about emotional intelligence even before I knew this was going to be a finance channel because I knew it was such an important thing for anyone to learn. But this was not a skill that came naturally to me at all. Even though I'm a patient person, I'm a calm person, I still have emotions and I'm still a human being. And sometimes I want to knock somebody out. You know what I'm saying? And there have been times in my professional life, in my personal life, where I've been tested, where my patience has been tested, where my anger has been tested, and I have to make the adult decision, and you have to do the same thing. You have to make the adult decision to be the bigger person sometimes. You got to learn the art of pulling somebody to the side and telling them, hey, look, the way you talked to me earlier, that was unacceptable. That can't happen again versus you going back and forth with them in front of an audience. Now, both y'all in the office with the big boss worrying if you're going to have a job or not at the end of the conversation. And I'll tell you this real quick. I needed to have emotional intelligence because in my job, I've always been a leader of people. And there's so much going on, especially when you first get into that type of role, you're going to feel like walking out. And I'm going to tell you this. And I said this in my last video. I'll say it again. There's been multiple times where I almost walked out of my first job multiple times. And if I would have did that, it would have hit me right in the pockets. Some days you're going to wake up, you're not going to feel like going to work. Some days you're going to wake up saying, I wish somebody would try me today. I'm not the one. You're going to feel like that sometimes, but you really have to think about what the outcomes of your actions are going to be. Because a lot of times the outcome is going to be with you sitting on the couch, applying to other jobs, AKA being about broke. You don't want that life, I'm telling you. So I've said enough about that, but I'm telling you, that this is advice that I don't really hear anybody giving to younger people. Like some older people need this advice, you know what I'm saying? Because not everyone has control over their temper, over their emotions. And if you don't have the control or the ability to assess your own emotions, what in the world makes you think you'll be able to understand anybody else around here? How do you expect yourself to stay calm under pressure? When you can stay calm, and chaos is all around you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you will be 100% unstoppable. And people are going to notice that. And I was told a long time ago, and older people have been telling me this time and time again, I never understood it. They're like, you know what, young man, your demeanor alone is going to get you very far in life. Never understood what it meant. They're like, yeah, man, like, it doesn't matter how smart you are as far as your IQ goes, but just the way you carry yourself, your demeanor. The way you assess situations, how you stay so calm. Never change that. Never let somebody get you out of your character. You keep that going, you're going to make a lot of money. You, you'll rule this place one day. That's what they used to tell me. So I'm telling you, read up on it. Just, just understand what emotional intelligence is. I promise you, you will not regret it. Let me give you another piece of advice right here. Don't chase money. And if you're anything like I was when I was younger, this is really going to challenge your way of thinking about money because when you're younger, you're always told, grind it out. You're always told, go where the money is. And I had a really hard time understanding what this really meant at first because it's not like anyone really explains to you what it means when they say, don't chase money. Like, it's actually a really counterintuitive thing. So let me give you an example. At some jobs, you have overtime, right? And I have known people who have done six days a week deliberately for the course of an entire year without taking any time off, just for them at the end of the year to say, hey man, I cleared 140,000 this year. At what cost though? At what cost? You're tired, your body's breaking down, and you're only 40 years old. And so since you're younger watching this video, I don't want you to fall into that trap. And it doesn't necessarily have to be overtime. It could be anything you can think of. Because some of us fall into the trap of doing things specifically just to get money. Like I've known some of my, some of my friends in college, they would major in a specific field specifically to get the money. And nine times out of 10, what happens when you do that is you don't succeed in that field because you're not, your heart isn't in it. You're not passionate about it. 
We let our parents, we let our friends, we let our professors and influences around us throughout our lives tell us what we should do so we can make money. So essentially, you follow the path of chasing money anyway. And here's the thing about chasing money, because I 1000% used to do this. It leads to you overextending yourself a lot. And it that'll age you real quick. I remember working 60, 70 hours a week at work, then turning around, going home, putting the suit on at night, and then driving out to the Coliseum or to a hotel auditorium or something of that sort and going to events and networking and trying businesses and, and doing all of these things. But my heart wasn't in any of that. I didn't like I was not passionate about any of it. I didn't make a dime. I spent six hundred dollars a month easily on that type of stuff. And it was a capital intensive business. And I thought I was investing. I thought I was a business owner. I thought I was just doing something and I wasn't doing anything. And what I was actually doing was I was chasing money or so I thought what I was really doing was I was on a hamster wheel and somebody had money in front of me, but it was completely out of reach. And no matter how fast I was running, I would never get in reach. No matter how many hours I put in, no matter how much money I invested in that business per month, I was not getting anywhere near closer to making any money out of that. So I wore myself out. Then the hours at work started picking up and I kept overextending myself and I kept saying, well, you know, this is good money. So I, I kept dealing with that type of abuse and I do consider it to be a abuse for a job to work you that much just purely because they have a low head count. And so what I'm saying is chasing money had me in my mind thinking, oh, I'm making good money. I'm making 80 something thousand a year at 22 years old, I'm doing good. At what cost? You're literally trading your life for $80,000 a year. When there's people working less than 40 hours a week, you know what I'm saying, making $20,000 a month. It's a losing game chasing money, it really is. And what I realized was I wasn't setting any boundaries. I wasn't telling anybody, hey man, I can't do this this week. I can't do six days a week every week for a whole year. I won't do it. Either you find somebody to replace me or you're just not going to have anybody there for those few days because I am exhausted. You know what? It took something out of the ordinary for me to wake up. It took me to witness literal tragedies to understand just how counterintuitive it was to chase money. A few of my peers had to have heart attacks on the job for me to realize this at relatively young ages, like below 50. I had to realize that some people were actually basing their entire lives off of their overtime pay. So whenever the company cut overtime, which they did a few times a year, oh, they were looking sick. They couldn't pay their mortgage. They were worried to death. And I'll never forget, I remember this one guy, I used to see him every day because he used to work overtime all the freaking time. One day he dropped dead, just dropped dead. Just, I just want anybody, I just want everybody watching this video to imagine this. Imagine you working for a living to provide for life that you have outside of work, right? Only to never experience that life outside of work because you're literally living at work and then you die at work. What was the point of that? And once I saw myself in a similar light, I was like, oh no. I can't keep doing this. So I'm gonna save you the trouble right now. That is exactly why you should not chase money. Instead, I want you to do this. Find a way to attract money to you. And there's a few ways you can do this. You can simply learn new skills. And we all know what high paying skills are. Like you really don't have to do any guesswork with this. But the thing is, it has to be a skill that you're interested in learning how to do. That is the caveat. So for me, I wanted to learn the skill of making YouTube videos, because that is in fact a skill. It's not exactly easy to be yourself on camera and build an audience through your authentic experiences and through your knowledge base. It's not easy to do. You might wanna learn how to code or how to make video games. You might wanna learn how to make Excel templates and sell them on a platform. But my point is learn a new skill that brings in more money for you, that you can do in your free time that you actually enjoy doing. And another skill I'm gonna give you real quick, investing. That is a skill and it's actually one of the easiest ways you can make money. It'll take a while to build up, you know what I'm saying, a, a massive amount of money, but especially the younger you are, if you do it incrementally, you'll make a lot of money. And then once you get it down, the same way you automate saving your money, in the same way you automate paying your bills, that's how you automate investing. And then once you do that, you'll be intrigued. You'll wanna learn another skill. You might even wanna learn how to start making money in your sleep, and then that's the next level. But I just want you to see, we are in a new age right now. The days of 
doing all the hard work and commendable work and being working 80 hours a week and having absolutely nothing to show for it, those days are gone. We have to start working smarter, not just harder. And keep in mind, I'm not saying don't do overtime. What I'm saying specifically in this aspect is don't overdo it. Have boundaries for yourself. Don't overextend yourself. Do exactly what you need to do and then get out of there, period. I wish I would have done that. You know, the crazy thing in life when you're young, and even now, people tell me this right now, you're going to run across older people in your life that see something in you, and they're going to say stuff like, man, if I knew then what I know now, I will be unstoppable. If I could trade places with you, oh, I would. I totally would. And I've had very well established people tell me this. I've had wealthy people tell me this. And it's because they understand that time is our number one asset. And I say that to say this, stop being so impatient. I said earlier that I'm a fairly patient person. I am. When it comes to people, I'm patient. When it comes to teaching people things when it comes to dealing with people's attitudes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can handle people very well. I've, I've been doing it professionally for years, so it makes sense, right? One thing I can honestly say I've never been patient about was my overall progression in life. Whether it was my salary, whether it was my overall success, no matter what it was, like I've always been impatient with it. I always feel like I should have it right now. I want that instant gratification, not in like physical things, not in material things, but I want instant gratification in terms of my net worth. It's like, I want millions of dollars right now. I want to retire from my job right now. You know what I'm saying? When I got my first job and I was making like 60 something thousand a year, I was like, I want to make six figures right now. I had no experience. And honestly, it was a blessing that I was making what I was making back then. But what I'm saying is we got to slow down some. You got to slow down some. You might feel like you deserve having certain levels of success. You might feel like you deserve making a hundred grand a year. You might want to have over a million dollars in your net worth. You might hear all these inspiring stories online about how people in their early 30s or late 20s were able to successfully walk away from their job as millionaires. But we have to understand everybody has their own race. Everybody's in a different part. And you can't be out here getting impatient. And one thing I learned about that is this. I was young, eager, and misguided. I didn't have the level of experience needed to reach that net worth. I didn't put the work in, the time in to reach that net worth or to reach that level of status of success. I was just getting started and had no prior knowledge, but hearing other people's stories enticed me to want these things sooner. And I think it warped my field of vision in terms of how quickly I should expect success. I've always been a smart guy, but once I graduated from college and started working and everything, I started getting incredibly unrealistic about pretty much everything because I didn't have any real world experience. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being ambitious, but there's everything wrong with getting impatient about it. And I'll tell you why. One thing I realized, impatience is a waste of time. All it does is it puts you in a room by yourself where you're alone with your thoughts and you're wondering why you're not there yet. Why does he have what I want and I don't have it? How did she get there so fast? I want that. Man, my neighbor's driving a nice car. My neighbor's house is bigger than mine. How did they get that promotion? Man, this person on YouTube is making $200,000 a year and I'm making 60 at work. It puts you in a comparison trap. You might be happy for them. You might be happy for these people, but it puts you in a comparison trap. And that's going to make you become bitter. And that's a waste of time because you could have that time could have been better spent putting in the work to get there. That time could have been better spent improving yourself. There's certain groundwork that's got to be done. You've got to build relationships. Again, it goes back to emotional intelligence. You've got to be smart with your time. Again, that goes back to not chasing money. When you're not chasing money, you have more time. You got to take your time. It's going to take time to get to where you want to get to. And this, this is what I've been told by my mentors for, I don't know, like six years. Like, I'm always in such a rush to get to the final destination that I have to slow down. This is something that I'm only really just now grasping. So I'm telling you to save you some time. We have to slow down. There's still plenty of time to get to where you want to get to. But you got to do it the right way. You can't just snap a finger and boom, you're there then you won't appreciate it because you didn't do nothing to get it.
And I'll leave you with this. It's going to take some time. So take your time. But you always got to push the needle forward. That's something that I always forgot to do, honestly. Push the needle forward every single day. Even if you just improve a little bit, boom. Okay, I'm one step closer. Because sometimes what we do is we dilate our own time. Which, when I'm saying that, I basically mean we shrink the amount of time that we actually have. You might have this much time, right? But then you condense it to this size when you waste all the other time. Those days when you get off of work and you're tired, you know what I'm saying? Those days you're Netflix and chilling all day. The days you're too busy worrying about what this person's thinking about you at work. The days where you're so tired so you sleep all day. The days where you're just chilling in the living room, just playing video games because you want to enjoy life a little bit. That's cool. Don't do these things excessively though because that's going to waste time. Sometime, sometimes they're meant for leisure and that's great. Relax, chill, enjoy yourself. But when you make your entire weekend about that, you can't complain about where you're at. Because that time could be spent improving yourself. In other words, don't waste your time. Especially when you're young. You have nothing but time and energy. And you're not always going to feel like this for the rest of your life. So while you have it, take advantage of it. Become the best version of yourself. Be patient. Have emotional intelligence. Clean your room. You know what I'm saying? Invest in that vacuum, learn about stocks, learn a new skill, and don't chase money. That's the money advice I would give myself, like my younger self, if I was sitting in front of him right now. So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope it gave you some good direction on where to go as far as your financial journey goes. Some practical, very actionable steps on how to improve it. Now you know ways to save your money. Now you know to automate things. You know certain philosophies about life that you probably didn't know about before. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you apply these things. And I hope that once you get my age, or even if you are my age right now, I hope it puts your future in the right direction and you end up reaching all of your financial goals. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.